guys. Welcome back to Crazy Brave Homeschool. I'm going to make this really short because um, the lighting is terrible. <laughs> it's uh, evening. I just got back from a work trip and I wanted to get this footage up um, that I shot a few days ago. So this is just, it's a book haul. It's not even like a book haul though. It's like book choices that we made for our homeschool for this whole school year. Um, so it's a lot of books. Um, I don't know how long this video is going to be yet, but uh, if you love books, stick with it, I guess. I've got a lot of great thrifted finds. Um, we've got all subjects. I've got science books, nature study, uh, literature, history, um, uh, Native American Heritage Month is what we're studying this month. And um, uh, I've got my whole book list in this video for that too. So enjoy and I'll see you guys soon. Okay guys, so like I mentioned um, before, I've got stacks of books for um, like all subjects pretty much. And I'm just gonna kind of go one stack at a time. So these are the science books that I've picked up uh, this year. I definitely don't plan to get to all of the books that I'm going to show you um, this year, but they're just great additions to our homeschool that we will eventually get to one day. This we've utilized a bit for the biology curriculum that we have actually kind of shelved for a while, but I got this children's encyclopedia, the Usborne Internet Linked. I, Internet Linked. I kind of think I might have gotten the wrong one that the program recommends. But regardless, um, it's good. It's a great introductory encyclopedia. It's just like a two-page spread on each sort of, you know, thing. So uh, this is a great place to start, I think, for encyclopedias. Um, I got a few books on women, particularly in the stack scientists. So The Girl Who Drew Butterflies, How Maria Marion's Art Changed Science. Um, I'm really excited to dig, it, dig into this with the kids. Um, we are doing an insect nature study unit for the next uh, six weeks or so, and um, I'm hoping that we get some of we get to dig into some of this. These ones I don't have plans to get to this year. 101 awesome women who changed our world. Um, I was thinking next year it could be cool to do like an influential um, women's unit with my daughter. All of these books were definitely recommended. Well, some of these books were definitely recommended by other YouTube families, and I'm sorry, I'm not going to remember who. Um, but I think I got a lot of these recommendations from A Little Glam, A Lot of Mom. Okay, and then Rachel Carson and Ecology. So Rachel Carson is that really famous author who wrote um, Silent Spring, and um, it like was extremely controversial during its time, um, outlining how we are, you know, pretty much destroying our environment. And it came out a long time ago. This is her, um, sort of a take on that for kids, which I think is great. 21 activities and experiments. I don't know, I'd like to get to this one. I don't know when, but this would be a cool one to maybe, um, take on for our botany nature study next year. Okay. So then I think the, some of these coming up are just animals. Um, this one, Tigress, it's not so much a scientific book, but it definitely talks about tigers and um, their environment and a sweet story about how the people, um, when the tigers came into their um, sort of area to hunt, they didn't want to kill the tigers. And so they came up with a plan to... Um, kind of get rid of the tigers, but to keep them safe at the same time. Don't mind the roller skates in the background. The salamander room, this looks like a sweet little story about a boy who finds a salamander and tries to rebuild its habitat um, inside, kind of like using his imagination. Uh, the Raft. We haven't read this yet. I'm so excited. We loved The Pond last year, um, and I've heard this one is just as good by Jim LaMarche, um, and it's just like, it's such a, I mean, to me, it, it looks very similar to The Pond and how it captures nature, and the illustrations are so great. Uh, the Crab Man. This was definitely a recommendation on some YouTube channel. 
Um, I believe this is about a boy and his family who collect crabs for money. And he finds out that the person who's buying the crabs is mistreating them. And so he must choose between like helping his family to make ends meet and protecting the environment. Um, uh, this one I just picked up at a thrift store. I thought it looked cool. My son's really into gorillas. And this is like a true story about like a little baby that got lost, I think. And how the tribe of gorillas helped to find him. Um, this looks really cool. So it's by a poet and a painter, Earth Songs. I saw this at a thrift store. Um, just like a really poetic way to study earth science. They're, you know, they're like poems, the way that it's written. Hot volcanoes breathe in me, my back blackened with cinders. It's just really beautiful. So I thought, um, we're not really, we don't have plans for earth science, but this will be a really fun book to bring in when we do. Um, these, I haven't read through these yet, but I've seen them recommended. And we also, again, don't have plans for this kind of science. We're gonna be doing nature study for the next few years, but I saw them at the thrift store and knew that we would wanna read them eventually. So now we have them. And again, um, no plans for space science right now, but um, this looked like a fun book about Galileo's story and um, thrift store find again. So got that. And then again, thrift store find just a book on the solar system. So when we get to space science, we'll have some good resources. Okay, the history books that I got for this year, I got the Osborne Beginner's History. These are like very beginner. Um, they are very little thin books that are just a nice introduction to world history. And they look like easy readers too. So these are books that um, once my daughter is a little bit more fluent and my son one day, they can read on their own. I did have plans to read some of these next term because we didn't have a history plan after finishing American Girl, but um, we do have a history plan now. So I will bring these in as they make sense for whatever history we are learning about. And maybe just kind of add them to like the morning basket. Um, this I had kind of planned to read because we are doing a Native American unit this month, um, but it is a little mature. And um, I think this will just be a wonderful book for them as they get older. So we'll come back to this for sure. But this is um, a lot about Christopher Columbus and the Wampanoag story. So like a lot of um, like true truth in the, the Thanksgiving story, which is why I got it. But again, I think it's just a little heavy. Um, you know, stuff like this, they're just not quite ready to see. Okay. Um, Little Folks of Many Lands. This book is really cool. Again, this was a recommendation on a YouTube channel. So it's short little stories about children from all over the world. Uh, and the way it's written is just really lovely. Here is Iqua. He is a little Eskimo boy. He lives in, the, in a cold land. It is far north of us. Let us visit him. And then it just kind of goes through his life. and has these just like real low quality illustrations, but I kind of love them. I think this is a really old book, is my understanding. So the stories aren't too short, you know, about a dozen pages. And then Mina, Mina lives in Holland. Many people in her land are called Dutch. So Mina is a little Dutch girl. So it's a great way to learn geography um, through tales. I think this book's really great. Again, I'm really not sure when we're gonna do this, but I'm sure it will fit in nicely at some point. Uh, thrift store find Abe Lincoln's hat. This is an easy reader, so this might be something I assign my daughter at some point. Um, I liked this one. I found this at the thrift store too. The Presidents of the U.S. So it's like a profile going from. Let's see who's last. I don't know. Is 
Pacific. Oh, it's Lyndon B. Johnson. Okay. I don't know my presidents very well. So that's where it ends. So it's like a one page spread kind of profile on each president. So I thought this might be a great resource to have. Okay. Um, my mom had the entire collection of these growing up and I don't have them anymore. But I remember really liking them and I found the one on Abe Lincoln at the thrift store. So I bought it and I thought if the kids like this, I might consider getting the whole collection because I really, I really liked these books when I was young. Okay, um, this book looks really cool. I don't know if this was a recommendation or if I found it at a thrift store. Houses and Homes, they're just like profiles of these different so in the back is like a whole index of like each country that's covered sorry for the there we go so these are all the countries covered and then they show how different the homes are in each of them Um, Daily Life in a Covered Wagon, another thrift store find. I thought I might um, bring this in when we do Little House in the Big Woods, and we have a homesteading unit with Harbor and Sprout that I'm really wanting to get to at some point this year. So we will bring this in for sure when we do that. Um, and we are covering a little bit of Egypt um in our history next term so i thought this might be a nice picture book to bring in for that another thrift store find okay i just have a few books here on um folk tales so we already own a few volumes of different folk tales from around the world um this was an interesting one and i think i saw this recommended on someone's channel the mystery and magic of trees and flowers when i got it i started flipping through it and i'm like oh Okay, this is um, a little <laughs> divination and dream plans. It is a little mature um, in that it is just pretty complex. Okay, and it's also kind of hard to explain exactly what this is. So in this enchanting collection of legend, folklore, and traditions, Gordon has gathered together some remarkable and little known stories behind some of today's most popular plants, trees, and flowers. So it's kind of like a history of um, botany in um, kind of these like more whimsical storytelling, uh, even spiritual. Some of these are, are kind of religious tales. So um, yeah, it's just really interesting. I don't know. I'm, I'm excited for myself to read through it, but I'm not sure when this will be ready for the kids. Um, this I got for our American, uh, I'm sorry, our Native American unit, Folk Tales and Tall Tales, North American Folklore. I have quite a few pages uh, bookmarked because we're going to be reading Folk Tales for our unit next week. Really pretty book. I like this a lot. Right. And then um, magical tales from many lands. So folklore from all around the world, from a wide variety of traditions around the world, come 14 folk tales of magic, mystery, and mischief. Um, this was at the thrift store, and I just thought, why not? We should have folklore from all around the world. All right, let's hit our chapter book read alouds that I have some, most of these I had plans for this year. Some of that sort of changed. Some of them we'll get to next year um, or maybe this summer. The Indian in the Cupboard, we tried, we got to, I don't know, maybe 50 and um, we just lost interest. I couldn't get my daughter into it. So, which was unfortunate. I really liked this book as a kid, but um, I don't blame her. I was getting a little bored with it too. So we set that aside. We also tried Island of the Blue Dolphins. Um, 
We were warned that she could be too sensitive for it, but we also had good reason to think that she wouldn't be. There was sort of a violent scene with wild dogs that freaked her out, and so we have set this aside and will likely come back to it at a later time. Um, she was into it, but I think that part just scared her and we need to uh, pull back for a little bit. Um, the Hobbit, we also tried and, you know, she wasn't like not enjoying it, but the language is heavy and I had never read it before, which doesn't help. I think this would have been better had I pre-read it. Um, but we got a literature guide to go with this from Hearth Magic and the literature guide was going great. It's very playful and age appropriate, but this I don't think is age appropriate for a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. It's just two above their heads. So we'll come back to it. I'm going through all the books that haven't, that didn't work. <laughs> Peacemaker, I pre-read this. Um, if you can't tell, my daughter really likes Native American stuff. I pre-read this and it kind of lacked the adventure that she really likes. And then there were some pretty mature themes going on too. So I just, I think I'm, I'm going a little too mature with some of our choices this year. Um, coming up next month, we are going to read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I think this one's going to go over really well. It has that adventure. It has the magic that she likes. It's about real kids. Sometimes she struggles with like um, talking animals. Uh, all the anthropomorphic stuff. Um, so I think this will go over really well. I think it's going to be a really great December read because it's just very snowy and cozy. Here come the roller skates. Where the Mountain Meets the Moon, we also have a literature guide for from Hearth Magic. I believe this is my plan for January, probably into February. It's a thick book, but if as you can see, the pages, it's really, you know, large font, big spaces. So I've heard this is really fantastic. I've heard the guide is really great. So I'm looking forward to this. We're going to start off the little house books. I really want to read all of them. My daughter really likes colonial America. Um, and so this, I have a learning guide for, we're going to probably do this the last month of school and pair it with a uh, homesteading unit that I got from Harbor and Sprout. Why is everybody looking at her? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to find out when we read the book. Mommy, can I start TV now? Mm -hmm. uh, the Midwife's Apprentice. Um, this, I was flipping through the library um, and I thought it looked really great. And she, again, she just, she really likes stories about real people. I'm also a birth doula. Um, I am not practicing at this time. But um, I thought, and she's you know, really been interested in that work that I did. And so I think that she might be kind of into this. Plus it's very kind of historical looking and she's really into that. My Side of the Mountain, um, this looks really good. I know she's gonna like this. It's kind of about like survival. It's about a boy, I believe he leaves his family and he's like out on his own. Um, there's a lot of nature. Um, I think there's like a hawk uh, element to it. And um, so we have the survival unit, the outdoor survival unit from Harbor and Sprout. We may do that the um, uh, second last month of the school year, um, second to the last month of the school year, um, and read this with that unit. I think that would be really fun. And then last but not least, I have Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Um, I don't have a guide to go with this, and I don't remember reading it as a kid. I actually don't really remember loving the movie. Can you turn on Kit? But anyway, I thought this might be a fun one to read with both my kids. Um, and I found this really cool vintage one at the thrift store. Okay, for Black History Month, we got the book collection from Beautiful Feet Books. This is like a mini unit that they offer. It comes with a really little guide. There's really not much about it. It's just reading the books and discussing them. But just real quick, these are the books that came in that unit. A Weed is a Flower. This is Martin's Big Words, The Life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Midnight Teacher, Lily Ann Granderson and Her Secret School. Before There Was Mozart. The Journey of York. And Mumbai's Declaration of Independence.
we are going to be jumping into the Tuttle Twins next semester um, for just some additional social studies. Um, I read The Miraculous Pencil before buying any other Tuttle Twins books and I really, really liked it. I think it's just an awesome way for kids to understand everything that goes into just one simple pencil in terms of how the free market works. Um, and these are really easy reads. So I picked out six all about um, different themes of government, economy, things like that in our society. My plan is to just read, um, I'm hoping to read one of these a week um, for a short period of time next semester. Okay, nature study. So next term we are doing um, the whole semester on birds and I'm going to be doing a video on all of the resources for that unit. I'm really excited about it. I've been planning it for a long time. Um, feathers, not just for flying. These are gorgeous illustrations um, and I really want to do like a um, nature unit on feathers and do a lot of water coloring. We have a lot of feathers we've collected. So that's definitely going to be one of our focuses from the bird unit. Birds of the air, Arabella Buckley. I don't have um, plans in the bird unit to cover these. We're going to be using a different spine. But I've heard that this little book is delightful and a great way to study birds. So uh, we'll have it around if we need it. An Egg is Quiet, really beautiful book. I love this uh, series. Um, we're going to be doing, just like for the feathers, we're going to be doing a focus on eggs. And I would like to do an actually like a whole poster project of, where is it? Like this of all these different eggs and use our watercolors and make something like really intentional and take our time with it. Okay, Robins, How They Grow Up. This was a recommendation from a family on YouTube. Um, this just looks like a really fun story about Robins. I haven't read through the whole thing, but I think this is gonna be great. earth fire water air we're going to be pairing this with our spirituality unit uh, that's coming up next month and it's just like has all these um I don't, are they like folk tales or snidbits what are they let's see so it's really just like they're dramatizing the elements the illustrators so that we may appreciate their enduring power and magic Drawing on myths, legends, um, images from around the world. Mary Hoffman tells how people have been inspired by or even worshipped the elements, tried to control them, or to their peril, ignored and polluted them. So I'm really excited to go through this book with them. This is awesome. This could also be um, a really great earth science book, too. Um, okay, so we're, I mentioned this um, in my last video, we're going to be reading Insect Adventures. This is recommended on the Ambleside Online Nature Study um, book list, and we are going to be studying insects for a while, so I'm excited to read these stories. They're from the perspective of a boy, um, just getting to know his surroundings. Tree of Life, the incredible biodiversity of life on Earth. This was a thrift store find that just looked really good. The Magic and Mystery of Trees. This was definitely a recommendation from somebody. So I, I will have this in the bird unit just when we want to start understanding a bit more about trees and why different birds live and different trees and that kind of thing. But obviously there's a lot more here than that. Okay, so these are all of my Native American uh, history books uh, that we're going to be using for Native American Heritage Month this month. We've already started this unit. We are studying moons this week with Treehouse Schoolhouse, so we've been reading 13 Moons on Turtle's Back. Um, the last few days we've just been reading one page, so like one about one moon. Today we read Maple Sugar Moon, which is the March moon. 
just been a nice way to start our morning time. Children of the Earth and Sky, we've been reading one story a day as we learn about the different houses that Native Americans lived in and built and traveled with. And it gives you a little background on that child's just sort of lifestyle from that particular tribe. And then to pair with Children of the Earth and Sky this week, we're reading Native Homes. Um, we've just been kind of flipping through this as it relates to the home. Like today, we read a bit about wigwams. And so we um, yesterday, we read about Pueblo Apartments. Uh, I'll be totally honest. My kids have not been that interested in this book, which sort of surprises me. We've had just sort of a weird week of just not great focus in our homeschool. Um, but I don't know, I kind of blame myself that maybe these books aren't um, just sort of exciting enough for, for them to like hold their attention. I don't know, I don't really know what the issue is this week, but I'm trying. Um, a Native American thought of it. This was recommended by homeschool f or YouTube family. It's cool because like at some point this month, we're gonna be learning about Native Americans today. And there's like a whole um, spread on that in here. And then um, it also kind of like, so it's like each thing is like two page spread on like how they have fun, communication, like transportation, medicine and healing, clothing, hunting and homes. And then this is a great map of the uh, different nations. Uh, Sacred Song of the Hermit Thrush. This is a really lovely little story, a Mohawk story. Um, we've read actually a folk tale, I believe in our Scotland folk tales of some of a similar tale, uh, which isn't surprising. These tales make their way around the world. Um, but it's how all the birds are competing to see who can fly the highest. And I guess the Hermit Thrush won because he secretly rode on the eagle's back. It's a nice story. Turtle Island, the story of North America's first people. I thought that we were going to be reading more of this too, but again, a lot like the colonization and Wampanoag people, it's just a little above their heads, I think. So we're going to hold on to this and revisit it when they're a little older. Native American animal stories. I have a bunch of these bookmarked. We're going to read these. Um, I think week three is when we are doing... Um, animal folklore, Native American animal folklore. The Jingle Dancer, this is going to um, pair well with our Native, America, uh, Native Americans Today week at the end of the month because it's like about this little girl that really wants to dance like her grandmother used to. It says it in here. But she um, she wants to do the traditional dance that her grandmother did. And it's kind of all about that. Um, this I read. So it was a recommendation on a uh, YouTube family. But then I read through it and I was like, oh my goodness, this is depressing. You know, it's like a story from this man's perspective about... Um, the colonists coming and taking everything and it's just um and how his the people of his tribe anyway trusted them because they wanted all the new things that the pale men had and the boy was having dreams not to trust them and the end of the story is just like let's see it's this last page so it was, we lost our lands to the strangers from the sky. We gave our souls to their gods. We took their speech into our mouths, forgetting our own. It's so, I mean, I just get goosebumps because it's just so sad and depressing. And I just, I don't think my kids, like they, uh, my daughter and I have started discussing all this, of course, but I don't think she needs a story like this right now. Um, this is, I think is what we're going to read for our Thanksgiving story this year. Um, it is 
yeah, talking about how the colonialists did not know how to find enough food. Um, but the first people, the native people watched them and decided to help. And so they taught them their secrets of what to grow. And yeah, I mean, all about the meal, how it changed the meal that changed both their lives forever. It's a nice story. It doesn't have anything like very negative about it. So I appreciate that for their ages. A myth called the Rainbow Bridge. And I forget, I, I've read it before, but it's been a long time. But it's specifically about the Chumash tribe. Um, I think we the illustration. Read this? She's did, naked. Did we read this? She's together? naked. I know. She's I think maybe I just read it and then I wanted to read it to you guys and we didn't get to it. So she's naked. Just incredible illustration. So cool. Mom. I should know what this is about, the Rainbow Bridge, but I totally um I have a couple books that I have in mind for my son. He's four, almost five. We've had a hard time with read alouds with him. Um, and so I've just been using the Treehouse Schoolhouse recommended book list every week, and that seems to be going well. But I did get him these kindergarten books from The Good and the Beautiful. He's not ready for these yet, but um, he will be next year, or maybe by the end of this year. And um, these are just really cute, easy readers. I had a hard time finding easy readers for my daughter. And The Good and the Beautiful has helped tremendously because it's just been really hard to find readers that are at her level. The libraries are just way too hard. She is um, a bit of a resistant um, reader. So I've needed to find stuff for her and it's it's been a challenge. The Good and the Beautiful has really come through for me. Hardwood Hotel. I got this originally for her, but then I did hear that it was um, a little young, maybe. And again, she's just so funny about the talking animals. So I think this might be a good one for my son, uh, maybe next year or when he'll be in kindergarten or first grade. Um, Tale of Despero, I think this is definitely way too advanced for him now. But again, maybe like in first grade or even kindergarten. Um, this will be a good one for him because I really want one of my kids to read this. It's a fantastic book. But again, talking animals. Um, this looked fun for a boy. I don't know anything about these books. It's four books in one. It could be something we save for him to read himself when he's older. But I, I was just thinking that like he's hard with read alouds. Um, he's just, he's a wiggle worm. I mean, he hasn't shown a ton of interest in books. So I thought if I got him something kind of fluffy like this, he might get into it. But next year we're getting way more into Charlotte Mason. And I know how she feels about fluff. And so I'm not sure, um, if we'll get to this or not. Um, I want to read him the um, Beatrix Potter stories next year for kindergarten. And so I saw this at a thrift store. I'd really like to get all the little books, but I saw this and I thought, well, this is great too. And so I haven't introduced this to him yet. I'm kind of waiting because I really want him to like it. And I really want this to be one of our main spines for his literature next year. And last but not least, these are the readers that I have gotten for my daughter that have been working really well for her reading level. So I got this box of Pink Alicious books. This is what the reading level is at on these. Well, why is that pink? Those are not supposed to be pink. Oh, well, I don't know. Let's read it and find out. Yeah, mom, yeah. There's, somebody, there's someone who just... Uh, this I saw at the thrift store. And um, we have the Treehouse Town Grammar Game. So I went ahead and just got this. This is um, above her reading level right now, but these will be great when she's there. I found this at a thrift store too, Lily's Pumpkins, also from The Good and the Beautiful. Again, a little above her reading level. It's mostly just above her reading endurance. Like she could read a lot of these words, but she just, you know, after a couple pages of this, she would be pretty tired. Um, this came in a set. These are perfect for her right now. These are like, um, well, not all of them. Three. One of them must be in her room. 
it was a set of four like mystery books. Um, I think they go up in level, but yeah, this is slightly above the book that she's reading right now. And then I got these two books, um, Sniff. And okay, so this is at her reading level right now. This is what she is um, fairly comfortable reading and still challenging for her. Also got the um, Biscuit series. I want her to get through these because like these are all really simple. Um, and I just, I want her to read them before her reading level goes above these. But again, I'll have them for my son. So that'll be good. Um, and then I have a, a storybook treasury of Dick and Jane. She hasn't shown any interest in this yet, which kind of surprised me. I really like these illustrations. Um, and I, th this is like perfect reading level for her. So I think that we need to get into this pretty soon.